Hello, everyone. This is Victor Dominguez, and welcome to Business Performance USA, our webinar series. We're really happy you joined us today because we're talking about awesome meetings. And why not? We spend enough time in them, so why shouldn't we want to make them awesome and actually effective and uh, an opportunity to really move our, our agendas forward? So, uh, again, I'm Victor Dominguez. We're talking about running meetings, so people beg to come. And I imagine you may have never had that experience before, somebody begging to come to your meeting. But why would that be? It's because your meeting is dynamic, interesting. People contribute, and their thoughts are heard and listened to. There's actionable items, and it's actually worth people's time. And frankly, it's entirely possible to create a buzz that, wow, that group over there has got something going on. They like showing up to work. They, they collaborate with each other. They trust each other. They value each other. Who wouldn't want to be part of that? So that's part of my take. Of course, we're going to hear from Cynthia today. And let's introduce Cynthia briefly. Of course, you can see her there on the right. She's the presenter today, Cynthia Stewart, managing partner of Evermore Services. I'm over there on the left looking kind of dour. I'm told I should change my photo. But I am Executive Director of Business Performance USA Global LLC, and uh, it's my honor to be of service to uh, my partners, first of all, because that's what we're about, Cynthia and Dr. Jeff Stewart. But I'm also of service to our membership and Business Performance USA. You can think of us as a coaching and mentoring network, a uh, online and face-to-face -face community of people who share knowledge and really care about serving other people, simple as that. So let's make this hour, or although it probably won't be a full hour, uh, worth your time. And the best thing to do that is to ask us questions so you get value out of this. You can ask questions with the chat feature, which seems to be more intuitive for people, but there's also a questions tool, if you will, a feature on the user interface. You can use that as well. We monitor both. You can always get a hold of me after this session at victor at businessperformanceusa.org. And, of course, we want you to sign up. Uh, membership is complimentary. We're a voluntary, executive-driven organization. And you can go to businessperformanceusa.org, click on the button you see, become a member with the B. Uh, we use a B because we are pollinators and collaborators. And this is one way that we pollinate, we share our knowledge. So there you go. Um, let me talk a little about Cynthia quickly here. Um, Cynthia is a partner and a co-founder of Business Performance USA. She's brilliant and wonderful, um, and I have to begin with that because to work with her is to know her, and to know her is to, is to love her and really appreciate her. But she also holds her MBA and is certified by the American Society for Quality as a manager of quality and organizational excellence as well as a Six Sigma black belt. So she can, I'll say, she can, she can kick. I'll just say that. Um, she partners with leaders in high growth organizations through a strategic and staged approach to employee development, quality improvement, and business problem solving. The one word for Cynthia is quality. That's her umbrella. Everything she does is under the quality movement and with quality in mind. She's also successfully led and directed culture teams at all levels across 11 states during her tenure as a senior internal business improvement advisor with Central and Southwest and American Electric Power. And these also include strategic merger assignments. And we can imagine uh, if you've ever been in a, a merger acquisition environment, um, talk about culture change. But Cynthia is the kind of person that can handle it. She's managed thousands of people and hundreds of teams and we're really happy to have her today. So Cynthia, let's uh, pass the screen over to you and let you do what you do best. We will be. Thank you, Victor. There you go. <laughs> so now I'm kicking, am I? You know, it's so <laughs> funny because <laughs> it's so funny because uh, one of my teams gave me a quirt, uh, a writer's quirt. So you no, know, you never know. Okay, now let me show my screen. Kicking and writing. And then, yeah, court. So who knows what people are going to say about me, that's for sure. Let me get this screen going here. Terrific. All right. Um, that's not what I want. For some reason, the way this works, this should be better. 
Oh, is that it, Victor? You see me? Perfect. Bingo. Thank you. Okay. We have tried not to have to go through this process, but GoToWebinar is kind of funky. What we're going to do is I want to find out a little bit about the audience today. So um, I want to know how many of you have heard, oh, please, can you come to your, can, can I come to your meeting? So, uh, Victor, launch that poll. Let's see what people say. <laughs> There's the poll. Uh, you can answer the questions on your user interface. Uh, simple yes or no will do it. Have you ever had somebody, please, can I come to your meeting? Um, and if you have, you may have possibly fallen down in shock, but, but maybe not. You know, like I said, it's possible to have an awesome meeting, but we just want to gauge the audience where we're at. So uh, click on that. We are getting feedback. Thank you for that. Um, they're starting to roll in, and it's a simple question, so I think we'll be able to bail out of this pretty quickly. And in fact, uh, I'm going to close it out in three, two, one, without much of a surprise, Cynthia, can you guess what the answers might be? Of course, you can see the interface there as well. I'd be surprised if people said yes. <laughs> right. I would hope that, but... You would hope, but in fact, uh, we have a 100% no uh, on this. Nobody's heard somebody ask that. Yeah, but. that's what I was afraid of. You know, that's the problem. That's the problem I'm trying to attack. Okay, I want to do one more thing. Let's... Um, Actually, I want to do a couple more polls so I can find out about people. So here's the second poll. Um, I want you. I want to hear how you would describe most meetings. Um, would you think of them as a waste of time, a necessary evil? Sometimes they're helpful, but and sometimes they're, you know, most of the time they're pretty good. What is your experience of meetings? So launch that poll, Victor. There you go. Poll is launched. And again, you can click on the user interface. You've got three options there. All ends of the spectrum. I put wow. in there, by the way, these are things that I hear a lot. What I hear mostly is that it's a waste of time. And so, you know, maybe it'll be weighted that way from this audience. But right. I can't tell you how many people feel they're, oh, my God, I've got another meeting. And I noticed that... Um, you know, I, I work with companies, and I work with director and manager levels primarily, as well as executives. I, I work under leadership of the CEOs of the companies I consult with. Uh, and where I hear this is a lot in the middle management ranks, and I think, you know, they feel like they should be working, and they don't right. feel like they're working when they're not, you know, at their desks. I hear you. Um, so, so yeah, we're going to, we're going to, the polls are coming in, they're, the, Activity is dwindling down. I'm going to close this out in close to uh, three, two, one, and let's close that. Um, and let me articulate the the percentages here. We have uh, number one comes in at top 43% believe they're a waste of time, and that's astounding, given how much uh, time we spend in meetings. It kind of kind of drops out. Uh, uh, in order here, number two is the next highest at 36%. They're necessary evil. you got to do it, but necessary. Um, number three is 21%. They're sometimes helpful. So all in all, that's not too bad, close to just over one-fifth. They're at least sometimes helpful. Four is unfortunately zero. Uh, nobody said they're mostly good, and that's why we're having this webinar today. So imagine the uh, drain on resources to have a meeting that are Never mostly good. Exactly. You know why I, I'm really into Lean Six Sigma, so that's a waste. No kidding. <laughs> that's a definite waste. Now, I hate to bore our audience too much, but I just now I'd like to ask this one. You join this webinar because you want to get rid of meetings altogether. You want to tell others how to run awesome meetings. You, you're going to run a meeting, but you don't know how, or you want to run meetings, and you want them to be awesome. So, Victor? There it is. And we asked this poll in particular so we can know best how to help you both on this webinar and after the webinar, because, again, we encourage you to reach out and go over some of the details. We're going to cover a lot of ground today. And feel free to bring in a specific situation. Email me or Cynthia. Um, we can even call on Skype. It's helpful when you have a relevant situation that we can talk about. So go ahead and click there on your user interface. Um, 
tallies are coming in. Um, well, I was going to start giving you kind of a play-by-play, -play, but I don't want to taint the uh, feedback. We just really want to know how best to help you. So, Cynthia, I'm sure we're going to cover this. Uh, well, I'm going to give 10 more seconds, but what I find fascinating is sometimes in the same company that uh, it could be a client, no names mentioned, people don't want to go to meetings. They think they're a waste of time. Yet at the same time, I hear people say there's not enough communication going on. People don't know what their role is, where they fit in. People were surprised by news and events. Uh, they find the part one team is working on the same thing they're working on. How ironic that meetings are a waste of time and yet people aren't communicating. So I'm yeah, gonna, exactly. I'm so gonna we're, we're going to tackle those projects, those today, I those topics. We we're going to close out and thank you everybody for uh, voting. Closing three, two, one. And thank you for that. I'm going to read some results here for you. And uh, I'm going to start with the top, uh, the big winner here, uh, poll number three. Number four is, number four comes in highest at 53%. So uh, there's a lot of managers out there and, and high level executives that are already running meetings, but they want people to beg to come to their meeting. Um, my words, maybe not yours. Next is uh, number three at 34%. You're going to run a meeting, don't know how. My guess is these are uh, fairly new managers, and that's a really important audience to help. Number two, is in third at 13%. You want to be able to instruct others, so clearly that's a managerial role, uh, mentoring, coaching others. And number one comes in at zero. Um, I well, guess that's, pretty good. that's good. I mean, personally, I would love to eliminate meetings, but that's not realistic. So. There you go, Cynthia. Well, it may have been different if I'd made this multiple choice. So I think everybody would have said, yeah, number one. And <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so uh, let's hit the question. So why do we have to meet? And uh, I'm using this. Look at, look at these football players. They are in a huddle. And it's really interesting to me that I've never heard, now maybe somebody else has, but in my uh, days of hearing about football, I have never heard anyone say they hate a huddle. They hate their football huddles. They wish they, they didn't have them. And uh, one of the things that I implemented when I was working for Corporate America, and I often help my, my clients implement, is something called a huddle. And what's the deal with coming together in a huddle? Well, um, the, the words come together is the first thing. So when do football players come together in a huddle? Where they do their pre-huddle, if you will, before the game, and then they come together in huddles during the game, and then at the end of the game, they'll come back to a huddle. Maybe it won't be a huddle, it'll be a meeting, but uh, what's interesting about that is we really need to think about our, you know, our, our lives every day as kind of we're in the field of play, and we've got to come together, we've got to collaborate. Business can't be done without collaboration. It just cannot. Um, even as a solopreneur, I have got to work with other people to get things done. And usually I want to make sure that in those meetings we're going to get our minds on the same page. Um, we're going to set the game plan. We're going to unify our decisions so that we can go out and execute on those. And we want to achieve our purposes, whether it's purpose just for the meeting or the overall goal uh, or purpose for the team or overall goal for the for the business itself, so we have to meet. I mean, it's maybe you can call it a necessary evil, but I think after today, hopefully it won't, it'll be a little bit more elevated than that. Um, what I came up with, I, I almost, Victor, I almost called this effective meetings, and I thought, yeah, I mean, effective meetings are really important, but to really get people energized around a meeting, I thought, they've, yeah, they got to be effective. They need to run efficiently, like we want to get in, we want to get out, just like a huddle. We don't have a lot of time on the field, so we want to make them efficient, but we want to get energy while we're meeting. We want to come away with, you know, a little electricity, a little be energized, and we'd like to get this, make this exciting, and um, I ran many, I literally ran hundreds of teams across my uh, career with thousands of people, and um, I got to where I wanted to make sure when they walked out the door, they were really excited, they'd laugh, they'd had fun, and they were excited and ready to get, they were energized, ready to go. 
Um, so I'm going to share my four E's, Victor. Here we go. When it, when it comes to effectiveness, um, effectiveness is that whatever you're doing is well planned to achieve the purpose at hand. So if we're talking about meetings, there is no way to make an, a meeting effective if there isn't a particular, like a huddle, we know in a huddle, a football huddle, we know what's going to happen. We're going to put our heads together for the moment. We've got the, the game board up there. We know who's winning the game. We've got a better sense about our opponent. And we know what uh, passes, what plays they're going to do, and how we, we've got to figure out how we're going to beat them if we're, or how we're going to maintain the lead if we're in the lead. So we know getting, going into a huddle the kinds of things we're going to be talking about. Um, this is something that I've learned from Jeff Stewart, Dr. Jeff Stewart. And it's kind of a simple way to plan a meeting. Who needs to be there? Why are you having the meeting, really? And what, what process are you going to use to achieve that purpose? So, and what are you going to walk away with? So participant, purpose, process, and payout. That's One of the things I, I often think of payout is, uh, I like your four Ps, but w what is the outcome? What's going to make this meeting successful? And in a huddle on a football field, it's understood what the outcome is. We're going to get a first down. We're going to put the ball in the right position to kick. We want to kill the, you know, kill the clock, we want to save the clock. I mean, everyone understands the outcome that is desired, which is your payout. Yeah, so I go um, meet a new client. We're, we're meeting with a client this afternoon. This is, this is my, it's what I have planned. Um, I didn't put their name down, but basically, we're going to go explore opportunities to work together. And they know that's what the purpose is. And um, you know, we're going to see how we can engage business together so they know what, that that's what's coming. And um, in this case, we know each other, so, you know, it's really, it's not no, so much an introduction. But at the beginning of a meeting, you always want to make sure to give people a chance to get into the room, is what I call it. So that getting into the room, that may be an introduction of yourself. Maybe it's a catch-up, like what's been happening since we last talked. You know, what, what's newsworthy, uh, getting ready for that. Um, but get, let people get in the room. A lot of times I like to go around, if it's a brand new meeting, you're going to have to have a little bit of an icebreaker. I like to make sure that people go around and get a chance to um, say three things, with their name, their job, and what they hope to get out of the meeting is very simple. There are other things you can do, but you need to get people in the room. So. The first thing you do is, is do a little bit of a warm-up and let people talk. And then you um, want to do the pre-critique, which is this is what the meeting's about, cover the purpose, and here's where, how we're going to approach this. Um, any, any time that you go into meetings, one of the problems I have with the way people approach meetings is that they think that a meeting, um, that they don't divide meetings up, so they don't say, okay, this is a project meeting. Uh, that's focused on the project, or this is the team meeting. We're just going to talk about the team and what's going on in the team and how we can team better. Or this is a performance meeting. We're going to talk about how we perform this last period and how we plan to perform in the next period, um, which those are what I call huddles. Uh, what I find is that everybody, you know, they throw project stuff in there, they throw uh, planning, I hope that didn't go off for you guys. But anyway, they throw too much in the meeting. What I say is limit the purpose so you can limit the time and have it planned and get the right people at the table. And that's what will make an, a meeting effective. Um, so I'll move on. So in other words, uh, people will have issues, topics, problems, solutions that they want to surface with the team, but they should understand they maybe you delegate uh, them with the responsibility as well. Okay, if you have that requirement, then let's set up your own meeting. You manage it, you prep it, you set the agenda, and, uh, and delegate uh, those that have requirements to uh, manage the requirements, but not, not impose them on a separate meeting. Is that logical? Yeah, I think um, that what, if you say we're gonna do a problem solving meeting, you know, or we're we're gonna we're gonna come together to solve problems. Usually, you just want to take up one problem. We're gonna take 30 minutes, solve this problem, get solutions, 
and then we're going to you know, go, go experiment with those, see if there's a solution, come back. What a lot of people have tried to do is they, they get into um, you know, rabbit trails, um, they start talking about history, they start telling how bad it is, they, you know, they do everything but what they really need to do, the business at hand. And so it, it's really good to set up roles, the participant roles is a really good thing, Victor, so that you have somebody that's scribing, somebody that's running the meeting, and then others that are participating. And the one running the meeting, the facilitator, really the facilitator, should be someone who's making sure everybody, everybody's voice is heard um, and that everybody gets their issues on the table, but also stops things uh, such as putting up parking lot. You put up a piece of uh, flip chart paper and you say, we're going to parking lot that issue and then we'll assign it at the end of the day or end of the meeting so that we know who's going to carry the ball on that. So to your point, Victor, making sure that um, you're sticking to the purpose and process and anything that's going to derail you goes up on a parking lot for later discussion. Love it. Thank you. Um, you know, efficiency is really important in running meetings because people don't want to be in meetings a lot of times. Um, there are maybe a couple of people that want to be in the meeting to talk, but the rest of them don't. So you really want to run meetings for the shortest time with the fewest people and the least resources to accomplish the objective. Um, so that's where planning comes in. You need to make sure the right participants are at the, at the um, table. And you want to think in terms of time, talent, and treasure. So what, what time, how are you going to time box it? Time boxing means that we're going to run this meeting in 10 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour. I, I recommend that if you have a, a you know, like if you have a two-day meeting or a three-day meeting, it's tightly planned. I've done those. I've run those two-day and three-day meetings. They have to be very tightly planned um, and very time-boxed. But I prefer to have very short meetings because you get in, you get out, and you solve the issues. So time, talent, and treasure, uh, making really good use of your time, talent, and treasure is how you get to efficiency. You want to have the shortest time, the fewest people, and the least resources to accomplish the objective. Um, if Here's the thing. If you don't have the right people at the table, then you have to go out and rerun the meeting again, so that's not efficient. If you don't have the, the amount, if, if you allow too much time to pass in the meeting, then you're not making efficient use of time. And uh, Treasure-wise, you know, people get in, they don't even think about the salaries sitting around the table. I always had to think about that um, because I had to run budgets, so I had to think about the salary at the time sitting around the table. You really want to say, if you've got a $1,000 meeting, you better have a $1,000 outcome, um, something that you're moving that's going to be worth $1,000 for that meeting. So Treasure, that's where Treasure is coming in. Um, time, talent, treasure are really important to manage in terms of the efficiencies of a meeting. And the way you're doing that is planning first, um, getting the right people at the, t at the table, and really staying close to your timeline. Um, I, what I find, and this is helpful for most people, what I find is with a good plan, let's say that it's a day and a half meeting, I find that things run long, like we don't need our timeline at the beginning of the meeting. But if you will allow for people to talk so they, they really are getting good, you know, if, if the discussion is really good and, and people are really debating ideas and people are getting their ideas on the table, then you want to make sure that you're allowing for that because what happens later in the meeting is that everything happens much quicker. So there has to be some level of meeting of the minds in, that's what's making it effective, a meeting of the minds in the meeting and that there is good discussion, not rabbit trailing, not historical, but really discussing um, the whys and wherefores of the topic at hand, that's when you have a good meeting, and that's when the time, talent, treasures are really, you're making effective and efficient use of your time and your people and the time that you've got, the money that you've got sitting in that meeting. Cynthia, that's a really, it, it's, the advice is so, simple it may be overlooked but i 
as testimony, you know, I've been in your two day sessions or summits that have been organized by you and Dr. Jeff, and I can testify. I, I think I've gotten more than a week's work of work done in two days by the way you structure things. Uh, I feel like I'm living dog years when I go to your summits because they're intense, they're focused, they're productive, and we get a lot done. So I, I, can, I can tell you this works, folks. You just follow the Cynthia's advice. Thanks, Victor. That's the plan, right? So energizing. A lot of people um, think about meetings in terms of efficiency and effectiveness, but not many people think about meetings as energizing, being energizing, or having that as kind of one of the focuses for a meeting is to make sure that they're energizing. So how do you give energy to? What does energizing mean? It means you give... When people get in there, they they get energy from the meeting, and they're activated, they're stimulated. Um, they also, energizing mean that it's literally in the workflow. So when I think about my workouts every day, I go and work out in, in the morning, and um, that my workouts are so energizing because I'm working. You know, I'm in the flow, I'm getting my brain going, I'm getting things going, and I really like to be active. Um, so. To, get, to be energizing, you need to make sure that people are getting activated. Some of the best meetings that I've ever seen um, and remember are when, man, we got out of our chairs. We weren't in our chairs. We were out of our chairs. And these are meetings that are, you know, I've run meetings, summits, if you will, um, 40, 50, 100 people. We had them up and out of their chairs, and they were busy. Um, you know, we would team people up and we would push people through processes and time box them and they would move, like especially when we were doing major problem solving for major initiatives or major problems. Um, one, of the, one of the summits I ran was for an $11 million. Um, we, we, got, we gained $11 million from our work in the summit. Um, in solving problems. So these are, you know, these are designed to come up with solutions. Um, so you need people, you need to, when you're in motion, people, f their energy's going, you know, their, their blood's going. So think of ways to get people active. You see this little, um, this little clip I found. Uh, you wouldn't think of this as a meeting because it looks like maybe you're at this woman's desk and you've got their computer monitor that doesn't look anything like today's monitors. But uh, I noticed this guy leaning in. These guys are leaning in and she's talking and they're looking at figures and they're active. They're having a meeting. Um, and it looks real appropriate. They've got, they've got what they need there. You know, they've got the reports there that they're talking about. And it looks like it's in the workflow because it looks like they're, you know, it's things that they can apply. They're applicable to the work itself. And that's what gets people energized. So when you think of having meetings, don't always think of just putting them in a conference room. Have your meetings at the desktop. Have your meetings at the front line. We used to go out to the front line. I worked in electric utility. We go, you know, we literally go out where they, you know, to the, the yards where they had all the materials and everything, we go out there. Go to the meeting. Go to the work and have your meetings. Um, don't always just do your meeting in, you know, in a conference room if you can help it. So that's another way to get people to rouse into action is where are you holding these meetings? Are you thinking about going outside? Are you thinking about going to the work place where the work is done? Go to the work itself, and then it, um, it gets people up and out of their chairs and gets them active. I think some of the meetings that I have, like I said, are those that are in the workflow at the meeting site, I mean at the work site, and we're meeting, and you know we get together, we talk, and then we go work on something, experiment with something, and we get together and talk. Some methods that are like this are the Kaizen, which is out of the uh, Japanese um, Toyota plant where people are in the workflow and they're solving problems in the work, testing it, solve, you know, coming up with a new way to test, you know, new solution, test it. So to get people energized, you want to think about how that meeting, where does it need to move to to be energized, to get to be active, to be appropriate and to 
do things that are applicable to the work. Um, so those are my suggestions on energizing your meetings. I like that, Cynthia. We uh, get people up at the whiteboard. We even have a habit of uh, getting clients to up and out of the chair and walk over to the whiteboard and hand them markers to write on it. Get Getting people out of your chairs uh, is remarkably robust for a meeting. And uh, so feel free to do it with clients, with anybody, with vendors, clients, customers. Just be, be active. Great advice. Simple, but great. Yeah. Um, and when they lean in, when you see them, their body <laughs> language leaning in, you know you got them. So when they're up and they've got a pen in their hand or a piece of sticky note or, you know, that or they're, you know, they've got their reports, they're ready, um, they're leaning in, so to speak. That's that means that they're they're getting into it, um, they're getting active, and it really helps to rouse the action that comes out of the meeting. They can be very energizing. All right, I can't believe we're already at the fourth thing, but exciting. Um, what makes people excited? Well, you know people are excited when they raise their voice, when, when they are aroused to laughter, when they are, um, you know, when ideas are stimulating and they're provoking, and when they're getting results. So I think about it this way. How can you add that element of playfulness? Um, some of the ways that I've added the playfulness is I make sure people have markers and light paper and, you know, they can doodle or color. Or um, I've even given people, people Legos. I give people balls to throw at each other if they don't like what each other said or they think it's hilarious. Um, so think of ways to make your meetings playful. I've done you know, all kinds of things to really get these meetings playful. When you get people into that playful mode, they're less likely to argue and they're more likely to be stimulated with ideas. Um, so you, you do a little bit of playing and drawing and Legos and whatever you can think of that's good for your company culture. Um, but then you provocative. We want to have our meetings be provocative. We want to stimulate ideas. You can do that with well-placed questions. You can do that with, you know, what do you think about this? Um, how would you solve this problem? This is a problem. How does it make you feel? What would I like to tap into the emotions a lot. What's your best, I, one of my questions is, what's your worst nightmare around this? Or what's your, your uh, best dream around this? So provoke emotions, um, stimulate ideas, ask questions is a great way to do that. And then, you know, getting people up and working together on the issue. I love to have laptops in the room for our meetings. I bring a laptop myself. Um, I like to get people scribing or either on a flip chart or in a computer, taking minutes, you know, giving everybody a role, making them feel like, you know, this has really been a productive meeting. We've come to some solutions here. People like to be productive. They like to make, they like to solve problems. I should have added that. It's, it's exciting to solve problems. So problem solving can be real exciting um, to get results. So uh, to get excitement, you know, people want, they want to have fun. So don't ever forget that element. Be sure to ask great questions. I, I know the well-placed questions really get people, you know, stimulating, get stimulate the conversations in the problem solving. And then, um, you know, have people writing things down and participating so that they're feeling like, well, we're getting the results. So I think with these tips, um, Victor, I want to. I'm going to sum it up. Anything else? Uh, a couple of things. I, I've got a couple questions here. One is about uh, social communication styles. The other is how to accept an idea um, that may or may may not be in target. Maybe it's half on target, but you know, ex listening to someone's ideas, allowing them to surface it. Um, and then when should one, and now I'm getting to the question, when should one critique uh, an idea and either approve it or shoot it down uh, is the question. So the, the two questions first is, can you tell us about social communi communication styles? 
which is, you know, people's personal delivery and how others respond to it. And second, how should one uh, listen to, validate, and uh, incorporate ideas or not? Okay. Um, technical. These are very technical questions. Uh, great questions. And uh, I, the social style. I've studied in something called Wilson Learning, which is all about social communication styles. Very helpful that I have that training because I can observe the room and see who's not speaking up, who's speaking up, and who seems to want to take command and control, and who who seems to want to direct everybody versus um, who wants to know the facts about the situation, do you have any data on that, would be the thing, or uh, somebody who seems to be real concerned about the people in the crowd, well, so-and-so hasn't had a chance to speak, you know, or somebody who is going, this is great stuff, come on, guys, let's, let's go do this. Um, so you can tell a person's social style and social communications based on the nature of what they're saying, if they're asking questions or telling people what to do, if they're focused on the, the task itself or they're focused on the people in the room. So um, what I like to do is kind of observe. Let, I, I am basically a master facilitator, so I like to observe the way that people are interacting and then, then I can draw out people that aren't speaking. I can have those um, that are speaking perhaps too much um, to take a step back and ask them to Thank you. We appreciate that. Let's let so and so. Let's hear from so and so. You know, so so having a facilitator, by the way, guys, to help you with meetings may be the way you want to go. Uh, don't underestimate the value of a facilitator. That's what one of the directors I told him. You know, I can do a whole lot more than facilitate. And he said, Yeah, but don't underestimate the value that you bring as a facilitator. Um, yeah. So to get to your point, Victor, really important to manage in a way that's constructive and affirming those different social communication styles and just being observant by simple things like so-and-so is not talking, let's, let's ask that, them what they think. So-and-so is talking too much, let's ask them to um, defer to this person who's not talking. Let's, you know, thank you for that, but let's talk to this person. Are great ways just to make sure um, that you get everybody's voice on the table and then the second question was very technical as well. Um, and if you're doing problem solving or you're doing, you know, anything that you're getting, trying to get ideas, the first thing you do is brainstorm. But you don't let people critique a brainstorm. You just let the ideas flow. And then um, once they flow, then you go into what's called a calling session. Calling means that you're going to now really think through brain, the brainstorm, the, the ideas and suggestions that people have. And um, wh when you do that, the simple way to get, you know, ideas on the table, take each idea and say, what are your, what do you think are the pros and cons of this idea? But first get the person who put the idea up there to explain it a little further so everybody has understanding, and then do pros and cons. I had a situation where I had, people were really adamant against, um, really advocating for a particular solution to a problem and after we went through the full discussion they stepped back and went another direction because they had had a chance to advocate for their ideas and to really for everybody else to advocate for the ideas and go through this pros and cons process and at the end of it they said no I think this other idea is really better and here's why because they had stopped and everybody got a chance to advocate everybody got a chance to put their ideas on the table and at the end of the day, he had had his chance to say what he thought was best. But after listening to everyone, he, he moved off of that. And I didn't think he would. Um, he was a director level. He was used to being in command and control. But after hearing what people had to say, you know, he was, he was willing to go with the majority rule. So those are some techniques, very technical techniques, to help um, move better ideas forward. I really like both of those answers, and thank you for that. And I strongly agree with you want people, with the second question, you want people to offer ideas and opinions, put them out there. I've often seen, however, people edit and critique and jump on an idea too, far too quickly in the brainstorming session. Um, 
it doesn't really honor the person that had an idea. And even if it's just a bad idea, let it just let it float out there, like you said, and give it some time. Um, that time helps the person feel comfortable and safe when offering ideas. And that time also allows people to maybe step back from their biases of way it's always been done and, and sometimes the resistance of a new idea. And, and they themselves will readjust and become more open simply by allowing time uh, you know, themselves to nurture and process and be okay with a new idea. So great input. Thank you, Cynthia. You're welcome. Um, I'm looking for other questions, and this is certainly an ideal time to ask additional questions. Of course, you may ask more uh, by email, but uh, are we wrapping this up, Cynthia? Where are we at? Yeah, we're at the last slide, Victor. Let's do it. So I'm in wrap-up mode. Okay, so four E's of effective meetings. Um, I hate to say it, but effective is number one. And don't forget that that's all about the planning. Um, the time you put in before the meeting pays off. So you want to get that payout. And you want to make sure that um, when you have any kind of meeting that it's really effective and that uh, there's a good, the right participants are there. You've fulfilled the purpose by using the process you laid out and the payout. People are, everyone got the payout. When it comes to um, efficiency, make sure that you're considering time, talent, and treasure. What talent do you need to do to have at the table? What, um, how much are you spending on this meeting in terms of people's time? Let's treasure their time. And then um, make sure that it's time boxed, that you have set out a way for them to achieve the mission, the purpose of that meeting. Uh, and not by putting too much into it, but making sure that it's very targeted and focused and that you're achieving that purpose with the way you run that meeting. And then make them energizing. Get people out of their chairs, meet in uh, other ways. Um, uh, make sure that they're, they're playful, um, that people are active, and um, they're, that you're bringing the appropriate discussion to the table, that you're not letting people side rail it with rabbit trails or too much history or too much of the wrong kind of information that's really not appropriate to the task at hand. Make sure that it applies in the work, um, that, that what you're doing is applicable and it's not a one-off, unless you're doing a team building or something that's really about the people. Um, that, you know, energizing means that, man, you're stimulating these ideas and you're getting people active and um, we feel like we're getting results. And then making sure that it's exciting with um, making it playful, thinking about how you can make it playful, make it provocative, and make it um, really productive. So those are ways to have, those are some four E's of awesome meetings. I, could, I think I could almost write a book by now um, because I've facilitated so many meetings and have learned some great ways to get these meetings up and in and out and through. So just don't forget some of my tips. Some of my tips are don't pack too many things, too many purposes into a meeting. Keep your team and project meetings separate. Keep your um, performance meetings to just focus on performance separate. Keep your problem solving meetings separate. Um, and by doing that, you can time box those meetings and keep them running very efficiently. And then next, make sure that everybody gets a chance to participate and that the voices are all heard and that people have a chance to say their piece and to advocate what's for what's important and to dis discuss and dialogue. Those are all very important aspects to meetings that uh, when people don't have a chance to say their piece, when people don't come to agreement on the um, suggested you know, action moving forward, that's when they feel like it's been a waste of their time. They feel like, why did I even come to this meeting? Make sure you get the right people in the room so that you don't have to call them all back when the right people are in the room. So those are ways to um, really honor the talent in the room, honor their time, and treasure their time, and get something done in the process. Okay, Victor, with that, um, I'm at the end of my time for today you just yeah pop there um real quickly cynthia my one takeaway from you and i've unabashedly stolen from this you some time ago is the huddle and my take on the huddle as opposed to a meeting it, it, this is an important issue for me 
a huddle occurs in real time right when an event happens. So typically I work with marketing, sales, and customer service folks. If an event or an issue, an, an obstruction or something less than ideal or a problem occurs in any of those groups, let's say the IT guy can call a huddle. Marketing and sales show up because they have input. They stand at the desk. It's a five-minute huddle. The whole thing took 10 minutes, including you know walking time to get there. And it was highly effective. It was real time. It was focused on identifying the root issue, so, um, proposing a solution. That solution is implemented right there, which puts you into a uh, testing mode. And so you have identity, solve, test, all in five minutes. It can happen all the time. And that's a wildly productive meeting. So thank you for that, Cynthia. And there you go. Uh, Closing out, we do this every week. Uh, next week is communications and the customer experience. That's me. I'll be uh, hosting, and, well, I'll be presenting that webinar. And you're welcome to join us every Tuesday at, uh, let's just say, noon central. Um, you can always become a business, uh, a member of Business Performance USA, of course. Go to our homepage, look for the button with the B, and pollinate and collaborate with us. Of course, write down Cynthia's information contact information, there's the phone number, there's the email address, and better still, you can watch this webinar on our website if you become a member. member On demand, you can start it, stop it, make notes, and really break it down to make it useful for you and actionable for you, and a lot of people do that. They watch videos on our website, and then they can communicate to me, uh, ask questions, communicate obviously to others and I will either answer the question or delegate that question to Cynthia. So great way to make your time and all of this knowledge actionable and start saving yourself some time, be efficient and make it awesome. There you go. Cynthia, thanks so much. Dr. Jeff, thank you for being our uh, quiet support in the background as always and make it a great day everyone. Thanks for your time. Thank you. With that, staff, I will be closing this out and stop the recording.